during the last sessions i first try to clearly explain the significance or importance of motives and motivation and then i said that there are about six, seven or eight ways which baba adopts to motivate us to attain the highest spiritual status and i was giving some examples from baba's avyakt vanis as to what are the yuktis which baba uses to transform us to spiritualize us and to take us towards our goal you will find that there are mainly five or six motives which a person generally has in his worldly life and baba tries to sublimate those motives to redirect those motives or rechannelize them so that we can attain the spiritual inheritance and attain our highest stage one of the motives which a worldly man uses is for example the money motive many people do not pay full attention to their spiritual knowledge because they say they are busy and they are busy in earning money in their business they do not know what gain they will be having by devoting time money and energy to this spiritual study therefore they are not able to have that much benefit another is the sex motive many have conflict in their mind because they don't have purity which is the foundation of brahman life and i said there are various manifestations of this motive and this takes a soul away from baba and deprives the soul of the inheritance of baba from baba and similarly there is the motive for social recognition and many of avyakt vanis baba has been giving is that we should not be after name and fame or public applause that someone should adore us but we should try to glorify baba and try to be an instrument we should have humility or the mastery motive that we want to have a domineering role to play a ruling part so on so forth this again is another one similarly the maternal motive to have a child someone would say that after this i become pure and take to spiritual life totally but not before that and there are public pressures one gives to this so these are some of the motives because of which a person is not able to pay full attention or to divinize the self these are the hindrances or the mental blockages which do not allow us to make our spiritual endeavor first rate spiritual endeavor now if i before i begin to give some examples from previous murlis i would like to discuss it in the form uh, first of all what baba gave us last night the avyakt vani that would perhaps make my contention clear now if we just keep in mind what baba said last night baba said snehi bacche i have come to meet my loving children and he said that there are three kinds of children they are all loving children they love me but uh, they are number wise in terms of love and he said the first among those they belong to the category which are sada snehi always in baba's love and you will find that this aspect of life baba has been very often emphasizing upon in murlis lagan mein magan sometimes he would say our yoga is lagan mein magan to be lovefully absorbed in baba's remembrance this is what our yoga is sometimes he would say ek baba dusra na koi none but one or that we should ek sang jod anek sang tod that we detach ourselves from all directions and pay our attention to one god only so these are various kinds of statements which baba makes to tell us the importance of having loveful relationship it all depends upon the intensity of love which we have for baba in some murlis he said those who have mohabbat they have not to do mehnat those who have uh, deep love intense love for baba they need not make very strenuous efforts 
things will become easy for them. Obstacles will wither away from their path. This is what has been saying in various forms. So that in itself shows that it is something very important in our life. That we should check up whether we are so deeply, so intensely, so highly motivated. Is this achievement of the higher stage, highest yogic or spiritual stage, that is the angelic stage in this life, our only motive or there are other motives? Or at least is this the most dominant motive which keeps under check, under control or under its guidance, all the other kinds of motives? The others are subservient, subservient to this or this sometimes fades away. And you will find that last night's murli throws light on this. When it asks whether we are sada snehi or we are kabhi kabhi snehi, sometimes snehi, sometimes not snehi, having love sometimes and having less of it the other time, or the third category, which remember Baba only in the time of need, when they are in some difficulty, or out of hujjat, as Baba said. Yes, Baba, we are thine, thou are ours. But uh, they do not have that kind of intimate relationship. They are always loving Baba from, their, from the depth of their mind. So this in itself shows, what do we mean by Sada Snehi? That is those who have constant love, without any breaks, without any checks, and without any lapses on their part. It's not that sometimes they are drawn to physical beings because of sex motive. It's not that sometimes they are busy with earning money and forget Baba totally. That is what happens when people say that uh, when we are devoted to our daily work, we forget Baba. It is because at that time we may perhaps be drawn more towards our money and business than towards Baba. So you will find that when he says Sada Snehi, that uh, Love for Baba is in our mind in an emerged form and at its climax. Then only he says we can attain the highest goal. And this is what happens when we are fully motivated to this. When the achievement of this kind of Bab Saman Avastha, the stage which is equivalent to or similar to Baba, is our only goal, is our only motive. Then only we can be having love for him and nothing else. And when we listen to Baba's biography, we find that Baba also fully devoted himself to this life when he said, Pana tha jo pa liya aur kya baki raha. Whatever worldly attainments I wanted, I have. I no longer am after them. My mind is now turned away from all of them. And at this stage, he gave up his jewelry business and he totally devoted to Shiv Baba. And he said, Allah ko Allah mila ko bili shai. Now, he referring to his business partner, says that, I have now been, I am now close to God. So I have attained everything. The love of God is everything, attainment of everything, mahabbat. And when he attained this stage, then only he became number one. And last night also he was saying number one, number two and number three in this spiritual effort. Number one are those who, whose imagination is fired with the love for Baba. They want nothing else. No name and fame, no worldly players, no comforts, no attraction for the senses, sense objects. Nothing which a worldly man wants, they want. For Baba, they are prepared to do anything, make any sacrifice, and do any kind of service, and lose their uh, even rest, because out of love for Baba. Not because they want to be glorified, even in the Brahmin family. So that is the stage of number one. I would li like to read Baba's original versions from last night's Murli and try to show what he wants to say about these three kinds of love. And from this you will get also uh, hints as to what are the yuktis Baba uses for our transformation, for redirection of our motivation towards the attainment of this goal which he has been using last night also. These seven or eight, as I said. Now, he says, Ye sne sare purane sansar ko sahaj bhulane ka sadhan hai. If you love Baba, then it is the easiest way to forget this old world. 
what do you mean by forgetting the old world it means you have no motives to be fulfilled in this old world you have no attraction left for you your mind has ceased to move towards this go this, this world you do not look back to this world and uh, which means you are so motivated now this is the highest in your mind and all other is now subservient to this and therefore you are not drawn to this whole world and uh, this is sometimes baba says marjiva that is to take the spiritual birth and to die of the old this also is possible only when we are fascinated by the new one and uh, we have no interest left for the old one and then he says sne brahman jeevan ka foundation hai just see this love is the very foundation we say that brahmacharya or purity is the foundation of brahman life is it that he is equalizing this because brahmacharya is purity and purity includes brahmacharya as a matter of fact brahmacharya is a part of it and what is purity to have no worldly attraction not for the body not for the sense pleasures not for the sense organs not for the worldly attainments so this he says is the foundation of brahman life and how can we have not this not this not this which belongs to the worldly because when we have love for baba then all these automatically are replaced so to be to get over our attractions and pulls toward the world what we have to do is to develop to in, i mean uh, emerge love in our mind for baba when this comes this the other one the negative side is automatically removed so so important is, is this motivation and uh, yesterday when dadi ji was reading the sakar vani uh, she was last night also when baba was samjhe ke nahi samjhe do you understand or you don't understand this has been repeated many times in the gita so arjuna do you really understand or you don't understand and baba last night also said they understand but they don't understand what do you mean by they understand and they don't understand at superficially they understand yes love for baba is the main thing it will bring transformation in our life it will remove obstacles from our path and we will get inheritance from baba and what will that inheritance be worth they understand but there are other pulls other attractions there are some other motives to be fulfilled and underneath those motives are so many desires the motive is the main head and the other is to think over this uh, very deeply uh, until and unless i feel that i am very deeply intensely motivated and that alone can bring me the stage of meditation even while i am in work why we sometimes say that we are not able to practice meditation for 8 hours a day as baba says do you practice 8 hours a day your meditation when there is the uh, load of sins of 63 our body conscious lives on our head and we are required to practice meditation to be yogis always yogis yoga is our very lifestyle and still we forget baba why it is because we do not understand really we do not realize it, the importance of this and then baba says teen prakar ke snehi baap dada ne dekhe baap dada saw three kinds of children who had love number wise jo sada ke snehi hain ve lovelyin hone ke karan mehnat aur mushkil se sada unche rehte hain those who have constant love who are always in love with baba they are above the obstacles and the hurdles the problems they have not to work tenaciously for attaining their aims na mehnat karni padti hai na mushkil ka anubhav hota hai they don't feel that there are obstacles standing in their way now look this is one of the yuktis baba adopts to transform because our aim after all is to attain even a worldly man wants to attain something and if the attainment is possible this way better than the other way we would any sensible person would say yes why not this way try and in indian spiritual scriptures they say parmarth se vyavhar se dhota hai 
if you just turn your mind to god even your worldly things get easy you are able to attain even worldly success better and easier if your mind is spiritualized so baba is again and again telling us that i tell you even in your worldly problems take the care of health baba says put dua and put dawa if we just depend only upon medicine and not upon meditation we have in our conferences very often the topic meditation is medication is it for telling to others not for us it's for public consumption not for us now when meditation is medication that in itself means that even health wise we will gain and what is our meditation just love for baba in the in our conscious mind in our awareness because our yoga is not mere concentration or just remembrance baba always said when you just define yoga say it is the loveful way the word loveful must be there this is the main difference between the other systems of yoga and our yoga which baba tells us this raj yoga one of the main differences between patanjali raj yoga and this shiv raj yoga the raj yoga which shiv baba tells us he just dwells mainly upon concentration have a focus and uh, concentrate your thought on it but ours is not mere concentration it is absorption it is total absorption because of the strong emotion of love and love is something which naturally draws us to our object we have not to make any hard effort for it our mind goes where our love is what else love means love means that something which draws us to itself and if we have love for baba naturally our mind goes its natu- yoga becomes natural and the higher the degree of love the higher is our absorption we say our stages of yoga are meditation or contemplation and then concentration and then realization i would say absorption totally absorbed in that love bliss peace in that kind of realization so that comes when there is love and baba says when we have this even from the worldly point of view you will gain because your mind will be relaxed suppose there is a logic problem a worldly problem staring in your face how a yogi will be able to solve it better, better by baba's love he can have baba's guidance because he is on the heart line with baba he can say baba what am i to do and just try baba will tell you child do this another person cannot think of it we have so much experience in this human life which is associated with this baba's work where we find that so many problems came in the history of the institution where we had no experience to deal with them and how baba guided in our even facing the public and doing worldly problems solving them or even personal problems because that gives you baba says i am your sathi i am your companion your friend your guide your philosopher your teacher have all these relationship with me he is the perfect one the wisest one he can give you that piece of advice which no one else can give just try even in the worldly affairs whatever you want to attain you can attain better because here is the one who, who knows the whole world the past the present and the future and what he can tell you is from a position where, from which no one can because he has those abilities which are unique which no one else has but provided we realize this and we surrender ourselves to him and surrender first of all our intellect to him because if we want to get anything from him it is through our intellect it is not to be given from one hand to the other hand just as we get totally from baba but this kind of thing is to be had in, from intellect to intellect from soul to soul and then he says kyon snehi hone ke karan snehi atma ke aage prakriti aur maya dono abhi se dasi ban jate see he says if you have love with me then maya and prakriti that is maya and forces of nature are matter they also become uh, servants unto you they surrender themselves to you so there not nothing like that and the scientists on the other hand are trying to conquer these forces of nature to bring them under their control and here is yoga which baba says this is the perfect science this is also vigyan it is a science 
which again makes prakriti that is matter you are most obedient servant because in golden age when we attain our perfect stage by means of meditation by means of yoga the forces of matter need not be controlled as the scientists are now trying to do they already are our very obedient servants so yoga power yoga is better science than these material sciences and uh, baba says those who have love they can have even that arthat sada snehi atma ka sada snehi atma malik ban jati hai sada snehi atma ka har samay har sankalp hai hi baat ke yaad aur seva ke prati he says that those who are having constant love for baba they they are they cannot think of any other worldly thing their mind is not occupied with worldly thoughts and uh, they become master of their sense organs and uh, uh, maya and he says har sankalp hai hi baat ki yaad aur seva ke prati all their thoughts are devoted for baba's service now what i wanted to point out was why we do not have the worldly thoughts which baba says he does not think of other worldly things his thoughts are not devoted to the worldly attainments it is because no charm is left anymore there is no motive to be fulfilled there is no desire left and as i was saying yesterday we cannot kill the desire desire is something which you cannot eliminate totally there cannot be perfect vacuum they say in this world and this applies to desire you have to replace one desire by another desire but desire must remain desire is one of the i should say attributes of the soul and even if we have no other desire we have at least the desire to play in golden age we have total contentment we have no desires as we have now we are not hankering after something thirst, thirsting after something hungry after something all those needs are fulfilled but still we want to have an enjoy and enjoying play we want to play the role in the drama at least this kind of a good noble desire is there but in this case our desire being to attain that stage all other desires are automatically replaced this is what we have to do and this is the process so i just wanted to read uh, show how baba has has been giving the importance of this love and motivation for attaining our ultimate goal and says that even Uh, there are three kinds of children the reason being that their motivation is sometimes one has the constant motive of baba's love and having the achie- achievement of the final stage the angelic stage others sometimes have or have sometimes they have they are after worldly things and the third category is those who are generally after worldly things and uh, of course they understand that it is baba who gives us everything and time and again they return to us now i had said that there are eight or seven ways whereby baba transforms now i will give from baba the vak one is how baba use, uses those yuktis and uh, i had said that i would keep in mind mainly the uh, mastery motive that someone wants to have the domineering position and uh, wants to uh, have some kind of a monopoly or say the the rulership part in a in a in a play that sort of thing and uh, keeping that in mind i would read from baba's murli what yukti has baba has been doing and the seven methods which i said baba generally uses i would first of all again repeat those seven methods because some of the sisters and brothers here are for the first time what are those seven methods then under these seven heads i would read one by one the versions from baba's avyakt varnis first i had said is to show that uh, the worldly motives are inferior and baba tries to create aversion for them this is one of the ways i will give instances from baba's murlis later second is that he tries to replace them by better forms one has money money motive now baba wants to give him something better where by he can have money he will say that you invest in this manner and you will get better in this manner and the third is to inspire for some achievement which encompasses all these which is 
all comprehensive which is all inclusive so that all your motives can be fulfilled by making one single unified effort the fourth is to defer that if there are some worldly motives baba wants you to keep them waiting for some time it may be fulfilled later and uh, he tells you that this one is more urgent and uh, uh, higher in respect of importance this need be attended first and after that you could pay your attention to the other motive so you could uh, keep that postpone that for some time and the fifth is to show the benefit in giving up which we discussed partly yesterday also tyag mein bhag hai that we by giving up we gain and the sixth is diversion he he tells us to attend to some other thing so that in the meantime the worldly motive dies by because of disuse because it's not used and the seventh is balancing he tells us of some other important thing so that the two motives have to be balanced and the seventh is that he explains to us how if we allow our motives a free play then we will be causing sufferings to others as, as well as to ourselves partly i was explaining this yesterday also na dukh to na dukh lo where i said now about the seven i would read take them one by one the first is to show that uh, our worldly motives if they are fulfilled or if they are allowed free play they will give in inferior result and uh, therefore to create aversion towards them this one i am taking up first partly i had taken it yesterday but uh, some some of one or two more points i would like to give and then i would proceed further now in one of the avyakt vanis baba says ye ishwariya la hai swayam ko siddh karne wala kabhi bhi prasiddh nahi ho sakega now a person who has the mastery motive why i am in particular taking up this mastery motive because this mastery motive does not allow us to surrender to baba and it is a great obstacle and it does not allow us to adjust in divine family in brahman family it brings about clash of interest among the brahmins creates disunity rift and loss of service and by creating this kind of service it creates tension in so many minds it disturbs it deviates your attention from god because there is the habit of bossism to lording over others and trying to command respect not deserve by qualities but to expect it is the habit of a demanding person so to say so this mastery motive is a like sex motive baba generally tells about these two motives mainly i find that one and this one therefore i am taking this one presently and a person who has this motive he wants that he may he may be his efforts may be lauded appreciated this is the inner wish always and be respected given some privileges some preferences so on so forth now uh, would try to prove correct supposing there is a meeting and people are asking for each one suggestions views now this person would give some suggestion and in order to prove that what he said was correct he would try to prove it to show that what he is the wisest because he wants to that all should do what he wants, wants to do what he is asking he is the most sensible person so instead of having humility he has got that ego it's because of this so that creates rift even if there are some other people saying some sensible thing it does not go into his mind because this is creating a blockage in his mind he is thinking too much of himself and too less of others that is the reason he does not help others or try to understand or appreciate others or get their cooperation even if they are willing to cooperate and is unable to adjust so baba says if such a person wants to uh, the hindi version is ye ishwari la hai it's a law of action he says law of karma swayam ko siddh karne wala kabhi bhi prasiddh nahi ho sakega this is the divine law he says one who tries to justify and glorify himself never really widely is widely held in high esteem now it it is a natural law and uh, if we keep this in mind even if we want to win respect want to win esteem in people's eyes it is not the way if we have humility if we have good qualities if we respect baba says 
गिव रेस्पेक्ट एंड यू विल हैव रेस्पेक्ट रेस्पेक्ट कैन नॉट बी हैड बाई डिमांडिंग और कमांडिंग बट रेस्पेक्ट कैन बी हैड इफ यू हैव सम क्वालिटीज एंड ही से वेन यू से अदर्स इवन इफ समूज डू नॉट अपील टू यू डोंट से बट दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट नो येस वट यू से सीम्स टू बी क्वाइट ओके गुड बट वट इफ वी डू लाइक दिस डोंट ट्राई टू ह्यूमिलियट अदर्स and put them into the dark and say what you are saying is altogether wrong and false because baba gives so many titles to every child and when baba gives respect to every every child how much respect we must give to all sisters and brothers so we have no authority to say to condemn wholesale someone's suggestion and views to negate it publicly and to say that this is something lower than what we are giving just to underrate into the eyes of others this is totally wrong we are violating baba's commandments if someone is giving the views and we don't agree with it we cannot be harsh and say no no this cannot be if you are going to do this all right then i am not with you this is intolerance this is losing patience losing temper this is not the brahman life the yogi life we should say yes because that is also a yogi soul and according to one stage it will one always one one speak maybe that sometimes we do not understand the real importance of uh, what someone is saying it may dawn upon us sometime later why outright we reject so baba says give respect don't try to prove yourself to be correct the wisest on earth and on the other hand you give respect and say well seems to be correct but what if we do like this let people compare it means you are not saying that other is wrong if you want to show that this line is smaller and your line is bigger it does not mean that you should just erase a part of other people's line and try to prove your one to be the bigger one if you can draw bigger one everyone will see yes it is bigger so what you say everyone will have the occasion to wait so baba says if you want to prove that you Uh, what you are saying is uh, really very good very high quality then you will not win respect what what is your really your aim you will win your respect if you give others chance and this was what we saw in baba baba would say this child now last night when sisters and brothers were meeting baba this one is always happy baba would say so happy aren't you so happy always the child would say yes i am always happy so if we advertise in the newspaper baba said that if you want happiness come to this child would it be all right just see he encourages everyone he does not say oh no sometimes you are happy sometimes you are not happy how can you say that you are not always happy? you are always happy when we have not attained that stage of constancy of perfection evidently no one is always 100% happy because ma- maya sometimes attacks us sometimes we may be at least 99.9% 0.1% may become less because the final stage will come at the end when we have scored the final victory baba knows this but baba gives the enthusiasm yes we find you are always happy now this child will go with this thought that baba gave him this title and he must maintain this title he must keep it just as a heavyweight boxer or someone who see has is, is a is a world uh, champion and wants to keep that title unto him because he thinks it's something which is given to me now you are the happiest one he would say aren't you now this one publicly admits yes he is see now see baba yukti and if i advertise baba says in the newspaper that if you want happiness you come so you agree he said yes so now he has to be happy somehow or the other isn't it then baba further said you have seen there are some mirrors and they are such funny mirrors that if someone goes in front of those mirrors one cannot but laugh you know they distort your image and even if uh, you are look, you are very tall you look very pygmy if you are very small you look very you look hot you laugh at your own self how funny i am looking in this mirror so baba said you have seen those mirrors the child said yes then baba said those who come even weeping and stand in front of those mirrors they leave laughing they when they see their face in that mirror so would you be like that mirror so that if anyone comes crying wailing weeping in front of you and goes laughing he said yes now this is the way baba gives lift to everyone and this is therefore the quality of a supreme being and if we want 
to be like unto Baba. We have to do this. Encourage everyone. Try to accept so that others may develop their self-confidence that in this meeting what they said was something sensible. Next time also they can give some contribution of thought, if not any other contribution. If always you reject, they will develop a feeling of no, no confidence in themselves, a, some kind of inferiority complex. And don't later on complain that this is this per, this person is not able to cooperate, not help. Because mentally this person is not involved. You never accept his precious views. Even a child is sometimes obeyed by the elderly people, even though they know that this is some childish thing. But in order that there may be growth of the child, in that interest you have to just accept that. So this should be approach, our approach. And this is what Baba asks us to do. Then he says, uh, others, I some two or three examples I gave that uh, if we follow the way of life of Shudras, if we have motives like them, we are stealing their Shudras habits I gave yesterday. And also that they say that we are trustees, but actually they are not behaving like trustees and they are telling lies, so on and so forth. These are what Baba is trying to create aversion, that our motives are sometimes foul, wrong, false motives. And then second one, to replace them by better forms. This is the second what Baba uses. Now, in one of the Avyak Murlis, Baba says, Man, Buddhi or Sanskar, mind, intellect and Sanskaras are the three powers of the soul, he says. You can attain real mastery by having these under your control. Do you ever become subservient to these powers? If you have mastery over these, you become sovereign of the world. Just what kind of enthusiasm he gives us. You can become sovereign of the whole world. Here is an incentive, a, de a great motivation. And then say these to others. You know, if you want number one, then you have to, to be the first in obeying Baba's command, in putting the principles of this Jnana into your life, first, better than any other can do. This is really the way whereby you can gain the first position. You can have the mastery over others, you can lord over others, or you can be the topmost among the whole lot. Then in another Pani he says, Sirf Atma Kalyani Nahi, Vishp Kalyani Parna Hai. You have not to work only for your own liberation, but also for the liberation of the world. Now, he wants that all our motives be directed not for our personal uh, fulfillment, but for attaining a higher goal, which is the public welfare, the welfare of the whole mankind. So, not respect for me, not this thing for me, that thing for me, uh, you see, uh, egocentric kind of person, wanting everything for me, selfish motive, but the motive of the service for the better, good, for the uh, good of all mankind. In another, he says, Vishwa Maharajan Banne Wali Atma Ko, Atma ka purusharth sirf apne prati nahi hoga. Unke, I will read better in English. I translated it today so that I can give you better immediately. Those who deserve to be, those who desire to be, would be sovereigns, would not make efforts only for themselves. Now, the mastery motive is there so that we also want to become sovereign. And generally when Baba put question to the students, to children in the class, would you like to come into Suryavansh or Chandravansh? No one would say Chandravansh, Moon Dynasty. Everyone would say Sun Dynasty. Alright. If you want to come in the Sun Dynasty, would you like to become one of the subjects or the king or queen? Everyone will say king or queen, not subjects. Because we know that those who come into subjects would have done lesser efforts in their past Brahman life. So everyone would like to say he would like to become double crowned king or double crowned queen. So if that is our, it is because we want the mastery, uh, there is our mastery motive. So if that motive is there, now Baba says those who desire to be good world sovereigns would not make efforts only for themselves. If that is what you desire really, then what you have to keep in mind is that you have not to make efforts only for your own sake and try to fulfill your own uh, motives or ambitions. They will have the stock of all powers full for the use of mankind. Their stock should be full of all powers. So naturally the attention is to be diverted towards having, storing, talking powers. And when our attention is towards that, naturally all our worldly motives are gone. At present, Baba says, at present, 
you use some of your time energy and attention for your own self but in the end one would not be able to spend even a single second for one's own self but for the welfare of the mankind why not do it from now so then so baba says that instead of trying to have this multi motive that multi motive these small desires small ambitions small objects to be achieved what we should have is the um, motive of becoming world sovereign and in order to become world sovereign what is to be done is that we should have a stock full of all powers why should we have a stock full of powers because a, a sovereign would donate he would be the donor he would give he would give help to others he alone deserves to be sovereign who makes the subjects how you make the subjects by by giving help to others and how can you give help to others unless until you have the powers therefore baba says that you build up the stock of those powers then only you help others then only you make the subjects then only you become the sovereign this is the way in another murli baba says the speciality speciality of special souls is to make difficult things easy now one who wants to have mastery he wants to conquer obstacles to remove difficulties to master every situation now what kind of situation you should master baba is now trying to explain us he is trying to give us some no- nobler higher aim of achieving mastery he says the speciality of special souls is to make difficult things easy god the father is adored as one who solves the difficulties मुश्किल को आसान करने वाला वन हु सॉल्व्स द डिफिकल्टीज आर हु रिड्यूसेस द क्रूसिफिक्शन लाइक सिचुएशन इनटू अ मियर स्क्रैच ऑफ अ थिसल और वन हु चेंजेस अ क्रॉस इनटू अ मियर स्मॉल थॉर्न यू कैन से बाबा सेज फ्रॉम सूली से कांट सूली से कांटा ही मेक्स इफ यू रिमेंबर द फादर नो प्रॉब्लम और ऑब्स्टिकल वुड अपीयर टू यू टू बी अ बिग प्रॉब्लम so baba says if you really want to be a master have your mastery motive realized fulfilled then what you should do is remove all obstacles and problems solve difficulties and what are the difficulties these difficulties as i said come because of our sanskaras and why our sanskaras come into play i explained it is the motives motives manifest themselves in the form of sanskaras how do the sanskaras influence our present reactions because of motives if a person has been sexy during many of his past lives he will have sex motive and this sanskara will give him sex motive then this motive will give him sex outlook sex tendencies and then his action his behavior will be like that if a person has got money motive he has been greedy during his past lives now his past sanskara will take him to this money money and money mammon will be his god so he will be after this minting money all the time so our past sanskaras give us motives and those motives give us outlook attitude tendencies and those tendencies lead us to actions this is the genesis of the action how our actions are how our behavior is what it is it is because of this so this is how the motive influence our present behavior and in order to get rid of it baba is giving us this example that you should try to overcome the obstacles the problems the difficulties what kind of difficulties those which are from your sanskaras how can you remove them by removing those ignoble those wrong those bad motives how can you remove them by motivating yourself for a higher nobler purpose what is that nobler purpose baba says win victory over your sense organs in one of the things he says have victory over your mind intellect and sanskaras in another he says so on so forth which i have been giving in another he says your efforts have to be such that you do not remain subservient to any attraction or suffering as a result of your karmic account or sense organs but you have to be the master of your circumstances the parasthiti sthiti sometimes he says karm bhog and all this you have to be master in all these situations instead of having other kind of master motive have this so that whatever is your karmic account at that time don't feel disturbed at that time you should control the situation be master uh, master knowledgeable must have become powerful and then control that situation uh, the and remove your obstacle 
वो स्टैंड इन वर्ग इन अनदर ही सेज कामन ना बन कमाल करना है यू हैव नॉट टू बी ऑर्डिनरी बट डू समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी सो दिस मोटिव दैट मोटिव एंड द अदर मोटिव दिस इज व्हाट ऑर्डिनरी मैन हैव सो इफ यू आल्सो आर ट्राइंग टू स्पेंड योर टाइम इन फुलफिलिंग दीस मोटिव्स सो यू आर जस्ट एन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन एंड डोंट यू वांट टू बी एन एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन टू डू समथिंग ग्रेट एवरीवन वांट्स टू डू समथिंग ग्रेट एक्चुअली एंड इफ यू रियली वांट टू डू समथिंग ग्रेट then why do you have these ordinary motives he says have some extraordinary motive and that is to become king or queen of the golden age in another he says apne chitra aur charitra se baap ke charitra ko pratyaksh karna hai you have to make the father known through your own acts not that you become known but father is known through your action so this is double now father can be known through my actions only when my actions are father like so i also become great and this is my wish this is my motive and by doing this i glorify father i do something great so this is double greatness so he says if you try to improve yourself to a stage whereby your actions can glorify baba can make baba known to others that is the real achievement that is the real mastery you can have in another avyaktvani he says lakshan dari hi hi bhavishya mein lakshmi banega he says you can become royal lakshmi if you have royal qualities and royal qualities can be have if we have this royal achievement the motive for royal achievement in our life now these were for the second i said the second yuk baba gave some higher aim so that we have we are motivated for that aim and the other motives are left behind now the third one is to inspire for a gain which is all encompassing all inclusive in which all our motives are fulfilled this is the third yukti which baba generally uses third not i am giving a number wise but one of them this is what i mean to say now i will give uh, i think one or two have every other yukti so that we are able to finish it today so that next time we can take some other topic now in this third category the third kind of yuktis baba says as devotees go and prostrate unto idols of your perfect stage and say to the idols you are great but we are fallen fallen ones and as the idol does not say that it is great even so you should be of so high a stage that anyone who comes unto you should feel as a devotee does when he goes unto an idol when a devotee goes unto an idol he in the indian way of worshiping is that when a bhakta or a devotee goes in a temple and he, the moment he is facing the idol he just lies down on the ground prostrates unto the idol and he says to the de- deity o lord o mother goddess or o god you are perfect so on so forth he glorifies and then about himself he says i am fallen main neech hu main das hu i am just a humble servant of yours now baba says the when he himself says it the the idol the image of the goddess or the symbol of that god does not speak out and say well i am this i am this but you are the reverse of it he himself says so baba says why you ask people to give you respect why you want command and demand and have this and all that why don't you develop that kind of state these images these idols are your own relics once upon a time in the past you had this stage and they just are reminiscent of that stage of yours and look even now when it's a, about it goes and this is what happens so if you just have your stage like this naturally you will become worshipped and who can be more respectful than worshipped even the political leaders the rich people or the scholars or all other worldly people who win laurels or who have name and fame or a higher position they are not worshipped but you become the most respectworthy most worshipped if you just first of all acquire these qualities so this is he says all encompassing he says main garib hu not only this i am a poor person but you are the giver of wealth to lakshmi he says to saraswati he says you are the giver of wisdom or of knowledge i am totally an ignorant fool he would say like this main murakh kal kami these are the words which a person uses if anyone says to another person you are a fool a quarrel would ensue he would say who are you to call me a fool why did you say that i am a fool what authority what right you have 
to insult me like this. But look, in this case, the person goes unto the deity and says, I am a fool. What a wonder. I am a fool, he says. He admits, I am a And not only am I a fool, he says, I am a I am a wicked person. Now, this is a stronger condemnation about the self. He says, I am wicked. I am a And kami. I am the most just, uh, I mean, lustful person. I have the most ambitious person also, he says about himself. So, because those idols are like mirrors, and our stage becomes clear to us when we go in front of them, what were their stage and what is our stage. And Baba says, these are your own past stages. Why don't you attain to that stage so that you, you are glorified? Now, the fourth one. The fourth one was to defer, to postpone for the future. And uh, now, take for example, Baba says, have you finished the service of world liberation? Kya Vishwa Kalyan kar liya? Paap dagd kar liya? Our most immediate task is to get rid of the, the result of our past sins. Which because of our body consciousness, we have been doing life after life. So much is the load on our head, of which we are not aware. But it, it causes us suffering every minute. Because... Sometimes because of ill health, sometimes due to disturbance in mind or pinpricks from others. Many, many causes of suffering in this world. And all because of our past sins. And many keep awaiting to bring that suffering later. Because all the sins committed in the past cannot bring the result to us all at once at the same time. Gradually, as different fruit take different time to grow and to ripe. So happens with the karmas. Each kind of karma takes different period to materialize in our life. But as Baba has given us facts and figures, 84 lives, and out of these 63 lives, every minute because of party consciousness, we are building something wrong. Using our eyes, ears, mouth, hands, feet, all our sense, body organs, in a wrong way, doing sins, milder or stronger. And Baba says, so, don't you think that the immediate task which concerns you, why immediate task, why the most important task, why the top most priority is given to this, when you have a long list of engagements, so many things you have to do, so many letters you receive, and in your office, so many telex messages, so many telephone calls, so on and so forth, and you say, this one can defer, postpone it, to your secretary you say. This one, urgent. This one, immediate. This one, at once. You mark. This one, top priority. Because after all, everything is not equally important. There are certain things which need your immediate attention. One wants to go to office because one has to earn money, livelihood for one, oneself. But the child is sick. Now the question is, the, he is so ill. There is the question of life and death of this child. Now, this going to the office can be postponed, but going to the doctor cannot be, because this one would die. So this is more urgent, he would write an application for leave, or ring his boss up that tomorrow, today I cannot come sir, because my child is uh, on deathbed, he is very ill, and uh, a doctor is to be called, because immediate attention is required. This is more important, every sensible person knows. Now in the scheme of things, in the uh, uh, job list which you have, the work which you have, the things which require your attention, your energy, your time, your thought. What is more important? And what is most immediate? What you have to do, the foremost of all. You understand? Again Baba says, do you understand or you don't understand? Do you realize or you don't realize? Mama generally used to give some murlis and say, Faisla karo. Samay ye keh raha hai. She would say, time is saying like this. Situation is like this. And your condition is like this. Now you have to decide. What is your condition? You realize. What is the time in the world clock? Do you realize? What is the situation that will follow? Do you realize? Well, if you, gentlemen, if you really realize, then judge for yourself what you are required to do. So Baba says that you have to give now thought to this, which is the most important, most immediate. So much is the load of sins of your past 63 lives on you. Don't you realize? And how short is the time left? And how much endeavor and effort 
is required to be in that constant stage of love and meditation? And how to attain that final stage of soul consciousness? Getting rid of all these bondages which you have built by your own wrong effort? And such short being the time, don't you realize that this one requires your most urgent and immediate and foremost and uh, <laughs> full attention? If it does, then why you want this, that and the other? Why your motives make your mind scattered? Why you are frittering away your energy? Why you are losing your mind in other thoughts, having waste thoughts, what Baba calls waste thoughts? What are waste thoughts except this? What is the leakage? It's the, it's the leakage. So, if you don't stop this, you are going to suffer a great loss. So, Baba says, I just ask you, you are trying to pay your attention to this, that and the other thing. Have you just freed yourself, liberated yourself from the load of your sins? Not. So, therefore, you must pay your attention to this. And, kya vishwa ka kalyan kar liya? Didn't, don't you know that God has come? And what for God has come? To create a new world. And God himself alone has not to create the world. He tells that he has to make use of Brahmins. These are his, his arms, his instruments. After all, he also alone cannot work. If he was, then he could have done it from Paramdham, from this whole world. He came here and first of all prepared Brahma, Mama and Baba and then others and then army of Pandavas and Shaktis. And through these instruments he has to create a new world. Why he uses these instruments? Because they are to go to that new world. And each one has to attain the status according to his or her own efforts. So naturally these have to be made the instruments. Because if they don't make the effort, how do they deserve to go there? And when the new world is to be created, it is not alone God's work. It is very clear. And we are all to be help, uh, cooperative in this. If that be the case, then he asks us, have we finished that work? If that is the work which is required at this time, the whole world is crying because of peaceless and a peaceful world order is to be created and you are to be the instruments and this is the most urgent work and if you are not doing this then what else you are doing? This is what Baba says. Have you finished the service of world liberation? He asks us. Have you finished the task of burning your sins? Now this one was the fourth one. Now the fifth one. So other things can differ. They can wait. This one the first. Now the fifth one to show the benefits of giving up the other kinds of motives. He says, I already gave you one or two yesterday, tyag se bhagya banta hai, that renunciation or giving up is really gaining, attaining. Now, another point he says, if one can make sacrifice for one's worldly relatives, mundane relatives, why can one not make sacrifice for God? Now, he just appeals to our sense. Don't you say, he says, that God is our mother, father, friend, philosopher, guide, teacher, preceptor. So again and again, life after life, you have been saying, Tumhe mata se pita tumhe, tumhe bandhu se sakha tumhe, our father in heaven, so on and so forth. In every religion, some kind of relationship is established with God. He is our creator, our father, our mother, our friend, our most beloved. Now, if that be your relationship with him, if for the worldly relations you can make your sacrifice, all right, then having so many spiritual relationships with him, can't you make sacrifice? Baba says, even in the case of sex motive, in so many murlis, Baba says, life after life you have been having this. Baba said, I have no beard. But he would generally put his hand here and would say, would not you just uh, think of my, my prestige? You are my children. Even for this small part of the last life which is left, this is the last life. Don't you realize? He again he asks, you understand or you don't understand? Again he asks us, in order to awaken us, you understand or you don't understand? Very often when we talk to somebody, we say, you see, you see? He is seeing. But again we ask, you see? He is peeping into our eyes, staring into our eyes. We very much know this. But again we have the habit, I also have this habit, of saying, you see, you see? So Baba says, you understand or you don't understand? Because you don't move your head, you, you don't knock it. Are you, are you awake or you are like statues, stone statues? Are, are you being moved or you are not being moved? He wants to know. And he says that uh, when you say life after life that these are your relationships with me and you have been making sacrifices for those relationships. 
and i was saying that in the even in the case of the sex motive he says this is the last part of your last life and how much time is left and can't you give this up even for this small part of this all right maybe that this is your bad sanskara it is uh, so much powerful in your this all right but if someone is ill if there is an occasion people are at your home if there is some other urgent occasion you are after all not always thinking of this you have other things to do in your world and you do it for your own relative sake you do pay attention to other things not only to the manifestation of this similarly he says can't you make this small sacrifice for me when i give you so much in return for it and am i not having any kind of relationship with you all other relationships are based on your body and body is mortal though those are only short lived relationships as a soul to the supreme soul you are permanent relationship and not one relationship all your relationships are with me and can't you make this small sacrifice for me he asked by giving this when you get so much then in another he says to have desire for fruits is to eat the fruit before it is ripe you want this you want that the other thing he says you are trying to have so many kinds of fruit and you just want to have this fruit just before they are ripe and i ask you he says to defer these wishes and when you just make efforts in this life and you will get when they are ripe in another avyaktvani he says desire makes an achievement ordinary kamna rakhne ka parinam kaman ho jata hai he says if you just have these worldly motives to be fulfilled worldly desires to be realized then he says the your achievements even if you achieve something so it is common place it is very ordinary which other people also have then what is extra ordinary in you you are not doing anything great so if you give this up you will give some get something better in another he says hero part banane ke liye pehle apne ko zero samjho if you can consider yourself to be zero then only you can become hero in another he says balihari jaane wale ki haar nahi hoti one who sacrifices everything for the love of god never faces failure so he says if you have this then you get this now the sixth one is diversion the sixth yukti he he tries to di- divert our attention our uh, from one to the other to give up this motive for another now he says knowledge for one say he successful hote hain so that when we pay our attention to knowledge to being knowledgeful our actually what we want to have why we want to have um, this mastery motive is to be master in all the situations to remove all the obstacles to gain success to have highest achievement and he says you can have highest achievement and high success by being knowledgeful so our attention is drawn towards knowledgeful because our actual goal is to become successful and if we can become successful by being knowledgeful as baba says then naturally that being our motive we pay attention to being knowledge in another he says lagan mein magan rehne se vigna nahi honge if your mind is lovefully absorbed in baba your way will be free from obstacles so why we want to have mastery over things is we want that all obstacles be removed from our path if that is our vision that is our desire that is our motive then he says if you just have your mind lovefully absorbed in baba this will automatically happen so he wants to divert our attention to have love for baba rather than try to uh, have our motives satisfied in a worldly ordinary way the seventh one by balancing now he says balak so malak the child is the master if you want to be the master you have also to be the child both have these have to be balanced this is another and then the eighth he says uh, i said that he uh, explains to us by uh, how by letting our motives come into play it causes harm to others and to us an example is dhokhe ki nishani hai jisse dukh ki prapti hoti hai he says deception causes suffering if your underlying motives are different than what you pretend to be then you are deceiving others and you are also deceiving yourselves and you should know that deception causes sufferings 
if by playing foul motives you think that others are not noticing it they don't know it at least baba knows it and your conscience knows it and you are trying to deceive this is self deception and also deceiving others and by playing this fraud by this this act of deception you are causing suffering suffering to others how they feel when they come to know of this and how you feel when the final suffering comes to you so know this that deception causes suffering so these are some of the yuktis by means of which baba tries to motivate us fully intensely towards our final goal so that we can have that highest achievement and with this i think i close om shanti